الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا انه هو الغفور الرحيم صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Honorable brothers in Islam, mothers and sisters listening at home, in the English language there is a saying that for every lock there is a key. For every lock there is a key. As in for every difficulty there is some solution out there. And so, Alhamdulillah, deen e islam Islam is that religion that provides the dawa, the cure, the shifa, the answer, the jawab of every difficulty, every trauma, every hardship of life that a person endures. whilst he stay in this dunya. And that key is the key of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. This key La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah is the master key. What is it? So you get some keys that will only open certain doors, but then you have the master key. That master key will open any door. And so we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has given us Islam. And Islam is the only religion that teaches a person how to cope, how to deal with the most severe, difficult situation in life. And in Islam there is one very important ruling. that to lose hope in Allah Baak, to lose hope, to be despondent, to be dejected, to feel that I am isolated now. This is haram, this is kufr. What is it? <coughs> kufr. A believer who has the Qur'an, who has namaz, who has the azan, who has Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as his leader, Allahu Akbar, as his guide, Imamul Anbiya, how can he lose hope? How can he feel depressed, dejected? Of course we are human beings that if there is any form of an impact, there is feelings And you will feel that difficulty. That is only natural. Hazrat Ibrahim, the son of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he passed away, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was crying. Tears were flowing out. Some of the sahaba said, Ya Rasul Allah, you are crying? And he said, of course. I'm a human being, I'm insan, what is it? This is natural. وَإِنَّا بِفِرَاقِكَ لَمَحْزُونُونَ يَا Ibrahim. That, O oh Ibrahim, at your departure, I am sad. At your departure, I am sad. ہمیں گم ہے تمہاری departure. This is natural. Otherwise, he is not a human being. So we are human beings and we all have feelings. We all have feelings. But it does not mean that our feelings are turned and transformed 
to nashukri towards showing this barrier to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we are turning our face away from Him. This is haram. Shaitan usually will win the battle when there is some trauma, difficulty and incident that happens in his life. So at the time of impact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also watching you. Allah Pak is also watching you. Ki bhai, ye mera banda, my servant, where is he turning to? Where is he going? I always use this example because this example has left a mark inside me and you know it is a lesson for every one of us. And I've said this also many a times, but there is no harm in repeating it. Because when there is benefit, it is good to repeat because it is a reminder. That is why we repeat Surah Al-Fatiha in every rakat. It is a reminder. Because insan forgets very quickly. Our beloved friend Dr. Tawfiq Saab, when he was informed that your wife, who is an alima, your daughter, who is an alima, your son, who is an alim and a hafiz and a qari, and your other son, who is a hafiz and a qari, have all passed away in one night, in one blaze of fire. Tell me, who can cope with that situation? I was there as a witness. And he said to me, Maulana, my love for Allah has only increased. What did he say? My love for Allah has only increased. Oh, four janaza, four members of your family in one night. Your entire life is taken away from you. People go crazy, man. People, Admi Pagal ho jai. Really, people would need a lot of help and support in this situation. Look at the Iman. Look at that Iman. Look at that love for Allah. The first words, my love for Allah has only increased. Allah. Those words are still, they still echo in my heart. Only a few people can say that, my respected brothers. Few people can say that. Those who are beloved to Allah. Those who are beloved to Allah, Pak. So shaitan, what he does is at the time of impact, you know, your business is running well, all of a sudden something happens. Your health is good and all of a sudden, all of a sudden something happens. Your relationship with your wife is good and all of a sudden something happens. Your relationship with your neighbors or your friends or your children is good and all of a sudden something happens. At that time, to succumb and to understand the situation and to be firm, subhanallah, to have this firm resolve and this determination that Allah is the one who does everything. Allahu Akbar. What is it? Allahu Akbar. And to be calm. And to take everything in the right stride. That is what Islam gives you. But Islam will only give you this if you yourself have a good Islamic foundation. The problem today, my respected brothers, is that any difficulty that comes, this brother has never been praying namaz. Then because of the difficulty he comes, then he expects that Allah Pak must do his Quick fix immediately. It doesn't happen like that. Quick fix doesn't happen like that. You know, there's no magic stick. You also have to be in that caliber. You also have to have that Iman and Islam. Your personality should also be there. Subhanallah. Your connection with Allah. But this is the mercy of Allah, despite the fact that a person has never prayed namaz 
and some difficulty comes and he turns to Allah, then Allah is Arhamur Rahimin. Despite all his past conditions, Allah Pak will still receive him. Allah Pak will still receive him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Arhamur Rahimin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the merciful one. And so my respected brothers and elders, إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ The Quran says that you cannot lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Only that person can lose hope in the mercy of Allah when he has got no iman. When he has got no iman. Your iman, subhanallah, allows you for the barakat and the rahmat of Allah, the doors are open. That is why when we enter the masjid, we say, Allahumma ftahli abwaab rahmatik. O Allah, open the doors of your mercy for us. Allah rahmat ke darwaze hamari liye khol de. Allahumma ftahli abwaab rahmatik. So my respected brothers and elders, this is something very important. Nowadays in this world we live in, people, everyone has got difficulty. And, you know, when we listen to stories, when we hear a lot of things that are happening, first of all, it's very important that we realize, Alhamdulillah, Allah Pak is there. And that we should never lose hope in Allah Pak. When some of the companions were asked, which is the greatest verse of the Quran? Ulama have given different opinion. Ayatul Kursi, Surah Ikhlas, Kul Wallahu Ahad. Very powerful verses of the Quran, Mu'awwadatayn. But one from amongst the great verses of the Quran is the verse of mercy. Ya ibadi allazina asrafu la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Oh my servant, oh my abd, don't be despondent from the rahmat of Allah, from the mercy of Allah. Who is Allah? Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah can wipe all your guna immediately. Innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim He is ghafoor, he is rahim The one who is most forgiving, the one who is most merciful. Sahaba ikiram ajma'een would say with this ayat karima Allahu Akbar, this ayat is known as the ayat of hope. The ayat of great hope. And this is not given to anybody else but only to the people of Iman. Only to the people of Iman. That is why my respected brothers, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had removed shaitan from his mercy, and Azazil was given the title as shaitan. Shaitan comes from the root word shaitanun, the one who is very far from the mercy of Allah. Shaitan. So shaitan put a request forward and he said that now, I have become shaitan, that I am destined for jahannam. So allow me also, give me some power and some access to the people of iman so I can trap them. So I can trap them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given shaitan some power. Why? Because this dunya is imtihan. This dunya is imtihan. It is a test. That is why we are not angels. This is a test. Some power. And the power that is given to him is that, number one, the advantage shaitan has is shaitan is invisible. Shaitan is invisible. Number two, shaitan can flow inside you like how blood will flow in the veins. A shaitanu yajri ka majre dami. Like how the blood flows in the vein, that is how shaitan can enter the vasavis. And so, 99.99 of the times a person will feel very upset and he will say in my heart, in my mind, you know what, I feel that there are certain things that are coming and I'm not sure about my iman and he's restless. He does not need to be restless because this is from shaitan. What is it? This is from shaitan. Shaitan is putting all these vasavis inside him. Subhanallah. But then when Adam alayhi salatu was salam had seen what had transpired that shaitan, 
did not do sajda and you know this was his request so adam alayhi salam our father allah elevate his position bole amin he also put forward his request what did he do he put forward his request says bari taala if this is going to be given to him what an advantage he has then a lot of power should be given to us also the children of adam banu adam should be given that honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Adam alayhi salam, O Adam, with every person of iman, I will give five angels. Subhanallah. Thakke huye loge, roza rakha hai na aaj. Nobody is saying subhanallah. Eh, Pakistani community ho, to the imam does the bayan, and they also say subhanallah, subhanallah. Our Gujarati people are very slow in this, you know, don't say nothing. Where is that heat? Where is that heat? Say subhanallah. Five angels. How many? Subhanallah. Five angels. Allahu Akbar. Five angels. Lahu mu'akkibatum min bayni yadayi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, two angels, one in front of that person, one behind. And what, what are they? Bodyguards. Mu'akkibatahu. The Quran says, bodyguards. That is why I always say that otherwise if we did not have the angels, you know the plane that we are traveling in, the jinns would just give it a nudge. What would they do? Just give it a... You know these turbulence we see, it, it just one nudge down. This is what was happening before Allah Pak created Adam alayhi salam. Mischief from the jinns. Then Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam came. And then Anbiya came. And that fear was put in their hearts. And then the most difficulty was for the Ummah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why it is said that the most miserable day for shaitan was when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. And another miserable day for shaitan is the day of Arafat. The day of Arafat. It is very difficult for shaitan to tackle a person who has got iman. Very difficult. Because Allah has given that great protection. Five angels. And two are on the sides. Kiram and Katibin. What is it? So total? Four. Kitne hue? Four. And the fifth angel is like how the shaitan has access to a person's heart and is giving vaswasa of evil. What is he? Then there is an angel that is putting vaswasa in the heart for a person to do good deeds. That is why sometimes you will feel that you feel like you are an angel yourself. You know, you wake up and you say, let me read tahajjud. And then he will say to his wife, you know, I read tahajjud. Huh? Did you read tahajjud? The wife will be shocked. You know, sometimes it happens. And sometimes you will read your ishraq, your nawafil, you, you know, and this is the waswasa. As in not waswasa, what I'm saying is that the good whispering that comes from the malaik, the angels, and that he wants to do good. He wants to read the Quran. That opportunity. Five angels. And then Adam alayhi salam said, I want more. What did he say? I want more. Allah Pak, I want more. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Adam, I am giving you one blessing which is given to no one. If the person who has got iman and does tawbah, istighfar, then I will wipe out all of his sins even if he has done zina 100 times. Every guna will be wiped out. But with sincerity he must turn to me. Sincerity turn to me. Don't play games with me. Sincerity, turn to me. I will wipe out. Give him a clean slate, bus. Just toba. No confession box. You know, you don't need to go to Imam Sahib and tell him that, Molly Sahib, these are the sins I have done. Nothing. You just sit in the corner or in the house in the night, wherever you are, your musalla, you and Allah, and you turn to Allah, and you say, Astaghfar, Ya Allah, I'm turning to you, Ya Allah. Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all of your sins. So great na'mah, so as people of iman, we are at an advantage. What are we? And then Adam alayhi salam said, even more. What does he want? Even more. Then it is said that, 
for every one good deed minimum 10 you will be given reward one subhanallah minimum how much 10 one namaz in haram sharif how much how much umar farooq bhul gaya 100000 how much 100000 and then you go to Haram Sharif and you kiss the black stone. You know, it's like when you go to uh, sovereign land and you have the king there and you king, you kiss the king's hand. What do you do? Ikraman. What do you do? Ikraman. You kiss the king's hand. And this is what people did. Our mashaykh, they would kiss the hands. So Ikraman, when you are there, you're kissing one, one, something that came from Jannah. Something that came from Jannah. White, it was white, but it is black now because of the sins that it intakes. Subhanallah al-Azim. So we must never be despondent. Alhamdulillah, when we went to Masjid Aqsa, we read the verses of the Quran, we were given this opportunity to see the chamber and the room of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. The daughter of Hazrat Hanna. Hazrat Hanna is the gra- nanima, the grandmother of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. Hanna made a dua that if Allah blesses me with a child, I will make that child work for Masjid Aqsa. And she gave birth to a baby girl. Baby girl. She gave Maryam alayhi salam for waqf. Waqf. And because she was a woman, there was a room, one side was secluded for her. And she would worship Allah Baak. And a Nabi was chosen to look after this great lady. A Nabi, Zakaria alayhi salam. So now and then Zakaria alayhi salam would have access and look at Maryam alayhi salam. So he would see that, oh ho, in front of Maryam alayhi salam, there is Dastar Khan, food. The fruits of summer are given to her in winter. And the fruits of winter are given to her in summer. And you know, out of season food, so much food that is there. So he said, Anna laki hada, oh Maryam, you know, how? What is happening here? Qalat huwa min indillah, this is from my Allah. Inna Allah yarzuku man yasha, bi ghayri hisab. Allah can give rizq to somebody without any restriction, without any hisab. These were great people who were not mayus, did not lose hope in Allah Pak. When he noticed that Allah can give Maryam, a young woman, so much, Zakaria alayhi salam then went where he had to go in his part of the masjid and lifted up his hands. Hunalika da'a Zakaria rabbah. And there Zakaria raised his hands in front of his Lord. And he says, Bari ta'ala, if you can bless Maryam, you can bless me. I want a son. John the Baptist, who was born, Yahya, in English they call him, in the biblical language they call him John the Baptist. What is it? John, this, to baptize people in, in the Bible, it is, it is uh, John the Baptist who was there in the river Jordan baptizing people. And according to them, he also, it was known that he baptized Jesus. He was the cousin, the cousin of Isa alayhi salam. Cousin of Isa alayhi salam. And Yahya alayhi salam was born. And in Masjid Aqsa, as you enter, towards the left side, that mihrab is there where Zakaria alayhi salam made dua. And so what happens in Philistine, when people get married, they get married in that room. They get married in that room. And so you know why they get married in that room? Why? Why do you think they get married in that room? Ji? Because if Allah gave a child to Zakaria alayhi salam, Yahya alayhi salam, a pious child, they feel that inshallah the barakat of this great Nabi making nikah here, Allah will give them pious progeny. So that entire wall is full and people are getting married there. People are getting married there. Women also come that side, they get married. Nikah is done. Subhanallah al Allahu Akbar. Never be despondent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left the doors open. Ibrahim alayhi salam, 80 plus, making dua. Allah Pak, I want a son. How much? How old is he? 80 plus. I want a son. Mujhe beta chahiye. 80, 90. 
And Allah gave him Ismail. Then even after that he said, I want another son. Ishaq alayhi salam was given to him. Allahu Akbar. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. Very quickly my respected brothers. Inshallah what I want to do in our session is I want to uh, give you some uh, a'mal which are very important, which will help us in our, you know, daily chores. And this is something that is taken out from the Qur'an and the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so inshallah, what we can do is that sometimes you'll find that these amils, who are they? Amils. They actually do these a'mal, but then, you know, it is very dangerous sometimes to go to an amil who is not a scholar, who is not a scholar and and you can be trapped in a very difficult situation. So, alhamdulillah, everything is with us, and a person himself can do a lot of the a'mal. A person himself can do a lot of the a'mal. Number one, what we should do is, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an is the narrator, and he says that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and that he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me, so you see the chain. Is it Abu Bakr, Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, the one who reads ten times, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. What is it? And what is after that? Al-Aliyil. Did I read that? No. So you don't read that. You don't read that a reminder. Where did I stop? La hawla wa la quwwata illa hadith. Don't put anything extra. There's no al ali al azim here. Ten times in the morning. And in the hadith it comes that Allah says just by saying la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah ten times, that person will be saved from the anger of Allah. How important is this dua? So many times we are doing guna, sins. Allah save us. But this dua will protect you from the anger of Allah. That Allah does not get naraz of you. And then when a person reads La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah ten times in the afternoon, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Allah Pak will protect him from all the different kinds of trappings of shaitan, the deceit of shaitan. What is it? How shaitan traps a person. Now imagine for a person to be protected from the traps of shaitan, all the snares of shaitan, that means he has to be very intelligent. Allah will give him wisdom. And then the one who reads, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. In the night when he goes to sleep, Allah Pak will save him from the fitna of the night. From the fitna, so many fitnas of the night. Sometimes something can happen, fire, water, Allah save us, the jinns. You know, all sorts, theft and things like that. Harm can come, all of a sudden, you know, somebody is ill, something can happen. Allah save us in the night. That is the time when shaitan are out. Allah protects a person. So what should we be doing? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Ten times in the morning, ten times after zohar, ten times either after maghrib or either after isha. Palle inshallah. What is difficult in there? Sometimes you are traveling in one part of the world where there are things that are very uh, dangerous, dangerous as in animals are there, poisonous animals. They can be snakes, scorpion, even dogs or anything that can be out there. You are alone and this difficulty is there. One amal of the Qur'an. And this is in Surah Safat, verse 79. Surah Safat, verse 79. Just to read when you are walking and you find that difficulty. And say, Salamun ala Nuhin fil alameen. What should you read? Ayat of the Qur'an. Salamun ala Nuhin fil alameen. And do hisar. Just blow it around you. So inshallah ta'ala, no mosquito can bite you, no snake can bite you, no scorpions, no harm can come, nothing severe that any kind of harm comes. Salamun ala nuhin fil alameen. And do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect a person. Sometimes 
there is fear for immigration, custom, there is a court case, there is a judgment, there is a decision, and any kind of fear, any kind of fear. And believe me, I personally have used this wazifa. It has helped thousands and thousands of people. Kya hai? So what you do is, this is in Surah Yaseen, verse number 9, verse number 9. وَجَعَلْنَا مِن بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِن خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ And then you blow it in front of him. What do you do? وَجَعَلْنَا مِن بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَمِن خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ This way you are hypnotizing him. What are you doing? And you blow it. What is it? So you are going and you want to get married to a lady and your father-in-law is a hard nut to crack. <laughs> He's a hard nut to crack. So remember what Maulana gave you. So you sit in the sitting room, front room, and you say, you know, I want your daughter. And he is there. And you just say, وَجَعَلْنَا مِن بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ صَدًّا وَمِن خَلْفِهِمْ صَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْسِرُونَ And go, <laughs> blow it. <laughs> and he'll say, ha ha, take my daughter. When do you want to get married? So any kind of difficulty, you will see, Wallahi lazim, this wazifa is so powerful. The problem is today we have iman on ibuprofen, paracetamol, but we don't have iman upon the verses of the Quran. And in fact, we listen to forget. What do we do? We listen to forget. We are so lazy. We are so lazy. Now, a lot of the times you will find that we have children and babies, they are crying and there is too much tofan. What is it? Too much tofan. You know, I got a call once in the early hours of the morning. And it was only a few minutes like towards Fajr. And I says, Ya Allah, khair ho. Okay, Mali sahab, you know, my baby is crying too much. Can you come? I said, bas, mera yehi kaam hai nani ka kya hai? Doctor sahab, mujhe ab nani bana do. Babysitting ka kaam mein karunga. Okay. Tum, tum jante ho, you are producing and you want Imam Sahib to look after your babies. What is it? This is not the job of Imam Sahib to babysit your children. You do it yourself. Shadi tum ne karni hai. Imam, Imam Sahib does istikhara. And free hai? Free. Oh, paiso ki baat to yaha nahi hoti hai. Yaha, wali Sahib ko to muft mein do sab. Subhanallah. It doesn't work. People, they don't know. And what they should read is the verse of Surah Yunus. What is it? Verse number 81. Inna Allah sayubtiluhu, inna Allah la yuslihu amal al-mufsideen. Read it and blow it on the child three times in the morning, three times in the evening, in the night. If the child is very hyper, crying, difficult all the time, insha'Allah ta'ala, by the mercy of Allah, if there is sihar, if there is nazar, if there is any kind of asar, if there is any difficulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove everything. Inna Allah sayubtiluhu. Inna Allah la yuslihu amal al-mufsideen. Ayat number, Surah Yunus, ayat number 81 by, what is it? 81. And then you find that our children, they have to go for exam, A-levels, and sometimes children can't become hafiz. Sometimes children can't become hafiz. The easiest wazifa is for a child to read the whole of Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak Wa Wada'na Anka Wizrak and blow it towards the left side. <laughs> blow it. Continuously. And you will see Allah will open his mind and he will become a hafiz. So many children, their minds were weak. But by reading Alam Nashrah Laka Sadrak, Wa Wada'na Anka Wizrak, Alladhi Anqad Zahrak, Wa Rafa'na Laka Zikrak, Fa Inna Ma'al Usri Yusra, Inna Ma'al Usri Yusra, Fa Ida Faragta Fansab, Wa Ila Rabbika Fargab, and blow it on the chest. You will see that child will become a Hafiz. You will see that he will bring flying colors in his examination in the marks. Any exam. So some things are very, very simple. And finally, inshallah, we all like money, don't we? We want business, we want to earn a good life, we want to have lots of money. What is it? Rizq. We want to have good rizq. For that, there is one tajruba, dua and amal of the Qur'an that after every namaz read durood sharif 
and seven times surah Quraysh لِإِلَافِ قُرَيْشٍ إِلَافِهِمْ رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ Seven times you read Surah Quraysh and then after that you read Durud Sharif. What is it? You read after every namaz. It's not difficult. One Durud Sharif, seven times Surah Quraysh and once Durud Sharif. Durud beginning end and the and this chapter of the Quran, and you will see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of rizq for a person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq. Inshallah, brothers, just for one or two minutes, if you can close your eyes, and mashallah, look into the heart, and make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies the heart, and let this heart remember Allah, and do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نستغفرك ونتوب إليك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن عذاب النار سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير برحمتك يا رحمة الله